Hey folks, Jason here from JCR Cars. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to finally give you the rundown on what is it like to live with this iconic Ferrari, the 328 GTS. Now, I've had this car for almost 10 years, so I know it pretty well. I know what's good about it. I know what could be better. And if you've been on the channel before, you already have seen the same kind of video with my 1991 Ferrari Testarossa. So stick around, buckle up, let's get to it. The iconic Momo steering wheel is all about connection on my 45,000 kilometer 328 GTS. The seats are simple, classic Italian leather, and they're well bolstered and have held up well for their age, with a touch of wear on the driver's side. The best part of the cabin is the classic gated shifter, where just behind that you'll find a very easy to navigate climate control system that does feel a little lackluster in a Ferrari, but it's very fitting to the later 80s cabin design. The retro leather vinyl door panels and side compartments are very simple, but they fit the cabin design well. Lastly, the dash with the Velia gauge cluster is pure analog. It's crafted for the joy of driving. Okay, now accessing the front uh, hood, you're gonna do it through the switch here. And this is actually a safety in case this switch should break, then you have a backup right there. So that's how you're gonna come to the front and access the 328s, yeah, essentially a uh, space saver tire and the tool kit, which is obviously not always with these cars, uh, the electric fans. And something that's very important is always <laughs> on these cars here is to make sure that you put this down because I've seen people that don't know these cars try to push this down thinking it was a hydraulic and they bend the actual hood. So this is something very tricky about the 328. To access the rear, the engine compartment, you have this latch here. I've already opened it up. And let's see what's under the hood of the 328. All right, the deck will stay up on its own. I have already replaced these pistons uh, five or six years ago, but you can see this is a 45,000 kilometer engine. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like, uh, at least for my car. Very, very simple technology. Um, when you have this car, obviously if you're a pretty good mechanic, you can probably do most uh, you know, basic services, oil changes on this car. If it's important for you to uh, uh, have a mechanic do this, it's gonna cost you around 1200 euros to do a full service, all fluids, uh, when you uh, bring this car to your certified Ferrari dealership. The real benefit of owning a Ferrari 328 when it comes to the big service, the major service, which is the timing belt, is the fact that you can do that with the engine installed. Now this is a huge thing compared to the Testarossa where the engine comes out and that's about a 25 to 30 hour repair bill to do that with the engine coming out. In this case, the engine stays in and you're accessing the timing, uh, the timing chains with the passenger rear tire out. Uh, and essentially all the uh, housing around the tire and then the mechanic can come into there pretty quickly uh, It is a yeah about five hours. It's about 2200 euros to do the service with fluids and all that included uh, But when you come to do a major service and this is probably the one thing that people are really scared about on these cars on this particular engine It's quite simple to do now trunk space in the Ferrari 328 is actually quite sufficient um, a Bit of an unusual spot or way to access it with the zipper but you can see if you're into golf, of course, you're going to fit clubs uh, and luggage uh, space is obviously ample for any kind of meaningful trip with the 328. So let's fire this baby up. Is the test 
tried to set up the Testarossa in the same way, it's, it's really not possible. The weight of the gas pedal in particular for heel toe is absolutely perfect for this car. In terms of the important gauges, tachometer and speedometer are super visible for me, as is oil pressure and water temperature. That's in the main gauge. On the secondary gauges, you have oil temperature, you have fuel, and you have your clock. Uh, it's all super easy to see. And your air conditioning controls, your climate controls, are all there as well. Um, very, very simple. Maybe not the uh, the prettiest gauges. There's a lot of people that complain about the uh, the look and the feel of the 328 gauges versus the uh, the, uh, the 308. I think it fits very well to the car, uh, but they're very yeah. They're colorful, and uh, the feel of them maybe is not exactly at the expectation of a uh, luxury sports car, but uh, I do find it is very 80s, the way it looks and feels. Uh, in terms of the feel of them, they do they do work well in this car. Uh, in fact, the heating on this car is really good, but I'll talk about that in a second. What's really good about this car is the actual uh, air conditioning, the climate control. It works very, very well so long the uh, system is charged enough, and it was charged this year. So when I turn it on here, this thing does blow very cold. In fact, it's, it's too cold for, for, for me. Uh, it is quite loud. I'm not sure if you can hear it on this video, but uh, I highly rate this. So if you're sitting in traffic in a warmer spot, at least where I am here in Central Europe, in Austria, uh, it's very effective. If you're living in California or somewhere where it's getting really warm, maybe it's not at the level to do something. Uh, but the cabin is so small here, I find it really does a good job. If you don't want the air conditioning on, okay, you've got your normal fans and they are coming out the front here. The air conditioner comes below here, below the clock. Uh, but the fans, the normal fans are running here, so that's your defrost mode. Also very effective, very loud. Uh, they are variable speed, so you can turn them down. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit strange about that is actually knowing that they're on, if you have them turned down low, the actual lights to indicate that they're running are actually right on the rim of the steering wheel. So that's a little bit, uh, for my height anyways, a little bit tricky. Uh, but turn them off, you don't see the light anymore. But the uh, physical climate control, I find, is a real gem on this car. Now the heating system on this car is really amazing. Um, if you live in an area where it's quite cold, this car is always keeping you warm. That's a disadvantage, frankly. The radiator being in the front, and the cooling pipes are running underneath the cockpit. Uh, and this is something that the 365 had, that the Testarossa changed in its construction when the radiators flanked the driver and passenger side. Uh, so that cockpit is, is kept quite uh, cool, where it's not having the, uh, the disadvantage, the design disadvantage of having the pipes run underneath the cockpit. Where this one does uh, and that's why you probably would need either to have the top off uh, or you have the climate control the air conditioning running in the car so that is one disadvantage of it but the controls are pretty simple and they are very effective uh, when you're using this in, in uh, traffic you can see it very clearly the lights are good uh, however on the testarossa you can't see it. there's no lights actually on it. so this system is actually quite quite user friendly in that sense now once this car is warmed up uh, it does, it really does love to uh, rev this particular engine will rev to 7700 RPMs so it's very very happy to be up in the, and it's very happy to be up in the higher rev range um, and it's really important obviously to get the, the engine out uh, of its lower revs and use it, it really requires it so you have a couple more uh, thousand to go. Uh, 